Hey everyone, and welcome back to Granite. So we are going to talk today about the top 10 ACT math formulas for 2021. I've had a lot of students say they are taking the ACT in 2021, and they want to know which formulas are going to be most important. I've heard students say things like, there's so many formulas to learn. How do I possibly learn them all? Well, I'm trying to make your life just a little bit easier by giving you what I think are going to be the top 10 most important ACT math formulas for this year, 2021. So let's jump into it. So before we get started here, make sure if you like this video to like or subscribe because I'm posting videos like this all the time. And if you subscribe, you're going to see any time that I go live or any time I post a new video. So you'll be able to be the first to it, get those tricks, make your ACT score higher, and it'll be great. So our first formula today is a probability formula. The ACT has become really excited in the last year or two about probability and statistics. So you've got to know this. And it is that the joint probability of multiple independent probabilities, and I'll, I'll tell you what that means in just a second, so don't worry, but the joint probability of multiple independent probabilities is just the product or the multiplication of all of those probabilities together. So it looks like this, right? And you're going to use this formula when you're given questions like, there's a 20% chance it rains on Thursday, and there's a 20% chance it rains on Friday. What is the probability that it rains both days, right? Here's a probability, here's another probability, and we need to know what is the chance that it rains both days. And sure enough, if it's 20% the first day, 20% the second day, all you have to do is multiply them together, and you get 4% chance that it multi... <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> misspoke. 4% chance that it rains both days. That's called independent probabilities, right? When the probabilities don't rely on each other. So again, the formula looks a little scary, but if you just remember, when you see these independent probability questions, what is the chance that something happens and then something happens and then something happens, you just multiply them all together. You can use your calculator for that. It'll be great. And we are on to formula number two. This is a little formula in the field of combinatorics. So if your parents see you watching YouTube and they say, turn that off, don't watch YouTube or whatever, you can say, it's fine, mom, it's fine, dad, it's fine, whoever my guardian is, I'm just learning about combinatorics. And you'll sound, uh, well, they'll probably let you keep watching YouTube or whatever. So it's this, when you get those questions on the ACT that say, you know, Jenny has three choices for an appetizer, four choices for an entree, and three choices for dessert. And they want to know how many total choices are there. It is that the total number of choices on a sequence of choices is, again, just like the last one, just like the last probability. This is, again, we're kind of in a probability question here. It is just the multiplication of all of our choices together. So if you have three choices for an entree, four choices um, for an appetizer... I'm making this up on the fly. And two choices for dessert, right? We have three times four times two. It's 24 total combinations. So if you're a Taco Bell or something or one of those restaurants and they're like, this combo meal has, uh, you know, two million different combinations you can do, they're using these combinatorics calculations to get to the bottom of that. So now you know how to both um, calculate Taco Bell menu size and how to solve all of those questions like that on the ACT. <laughs> And moving on to the number three, and this gets the number three spot because it is one of my absolute favorite math formulas. It's so much so that I actually made an entire video on it linked up here. It's my fractions video. Watch that. It is a formula that says if we have A over B and C over D, we can rewrite that as A times D and B times C. Now, why we would want to use this and how this could come in handy for us is so long, it's about a 12 minute video, so it's actually not that long, but it's long enough that I don't wanna bore you with it in this video, we're trying to keep things short. But if you're interested, again, link up here, up near the top, check that video out for fractions. So tip number four is critical, you've got to know this, it is the area of a rectangle. The ACT has historically and continues to love 
areas of shapes. We have that the area of a rectangle is equal to the base, the length of the base, times the length of the height of that rectangle. So you got to know that. Don't forget it. If you want to know more complicated areas, how to find the areas of complex forms, definitely check out our ACT Everything course. It's linked below. We have lessons on lessons on lessons about finding areas of complex forms like the ones that will show up on the ACT. But with that, let's move to our next formula. And number five is another critical formula. You got to know this one. It is that the sum of all of the angles in a triangle are equal to 180 degrees. The ACT puts this on just about every test so reliably. They'll give you a triangle, and they'll give you two of the angles, and they say, what is the angle of the third? Or they'll give you a right triangle and then give you one of the non-right angle sides and say, what is the angle of the third? So many students think, oh, it's maybe 360, or they just forget that it's 180, or they don't go into problems thinking that they're going to need to know this. And sure enough, if you know it, you're going to do way better and you're going to get a lot more questions right. So that is tip number five for us. And tip number six. This is that sine of theta, sine of some angle, is equal to, only in a right triangle, this only works for right triangles, but sine of theta in a right triangle is equal to the opposite, the, the length of the opposite side over the length of the hypotenuse. Now, if this is for sine, right? You need to know cosine. You need to know tangent. You need to know all those. And if you need to review all those, just go ahead. Like I said, check out the ACT Everything course linked below, and you can learn all about those. But you need to know this. This is probably easy three, four questions on the ACT is going to deal with the fact that sine is opposite over hypotenuse. Many of you might know from uh, math class that so Katoa saying right sine opposite hypotenuse, cosine adjacent hypotenuse, tangent opposite adjacent. If you don't know what I mean, like I said, check out that ACT Everything course and you will know it in no time. So with that, let's move on to our next tip. So tip number seven, it made the list here because so many of my students forget this tip all the time. And I definitely, definitely, definitely want everyone to know this. It's just on so many ACTs and it's going to help you. You're just going to get this question right if you remember it. And it is that X to the A power divided by X to the B power is equal to X to the A minus B power. You'll see this in all sorts of questions. It's actually so important and so um, these sort of exponents are so um, prevalent on the ACT that I think I'm going to just be making a video on all of this very soon. So if you haven't subscribed, subscribe, and you should probably see that video coming out in the next couple weeks. I'll put it together for you. But again, you got to know this formula. It's great. It's helpful. It's going to get you extra one or two questions right every time. And our next tip has to do with matrix subtraction. And this could be applied to matrix addition as well. So it is important to know how matrices work on the ACT. They will put matrices on just about every single ACT and they look scary, but they're not bad. Basically, if we want to subtract a two by two matrix from another two by two matrix, we are just subtracting the individual parts. So the top left from the top left, the top right from the top right, the bottom left from the bottom left, the bottom right from the bottom right, and we get this resulting matrix. It works just like normal numbers. It's just there are four numbers instead of one. Again, matrices are complicated. The the, the, the college level math class of linear algebra is all about matrices. So that is another video that in the next two to three weeks, I'm going to be putting out a matrix specific video because I know it is something that students struggle with. It's hard. It's a new way of thinking about math. But for now, you know, if you just go element by element, you can add them and subtract them. Doesn't work for multiplication, by the way. I'm going to have to make a separate multiplication video coming soon. And with that, let's go to tip number nine. So tip number nine is this formula, but it's not necessarily a formula. It's more notation. 
It's that y equals f of x. You need to be familiar and comfortable with what that means. And it's so important that I have made a video all about y equals f of x, this function notation, as it's often called. So if you want to watch that video, here's a link right above me. Go ahead and watch that video on functions. I have a nice little metaphor that you can use, and you'll understand it, hopefully, really well. And finally, our 10th formula, maybe one of the most important for the ACT, it is the Pythagorean theorem. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. A perfect tool for finding the lengths of different sides on a right triangle. You got to know this one. It's there all the time. You got to know how it works. Could not be more important. This is one more of those videos. I'm going to be making a Pythagorean theorem video coming very soon. It's actually already in the works. I already have most of it done. I'm just procrastinating on a couple little details that I want to hash out for you guys so it makes as much sense as possible. But you got to know the Pythagorean theorem. And that is our last tip here in our 2021 top 10 ACT math tips and tricks. I hope that's helpful. If there are any formulas that you don't know, you don't know what they do, you don't know how they work, leave them in the comments below and I will tell you how they work. And we'll leave any comments. Honestly, most of my videos, most of the ideas for my videos at this point are just from subscribers leaving comments saying, hey, Grantly, I don't know how to solve this. Can you tell me how to do this? And then I make a video. That's actually how this formula video came to be. One of my subscribers in our top 10 ACT tips and tricks for the whole test said, hey, can you tell me about math formulas? And sure enough, I made this video. So please leave comments and I'll explain to you how to do things. It'll be great. So I can't wait to see everyone in our next video. Remember, if you want a really comprehensive online class for the ACT, check out the ACT Everything course or go to granitetestprep.com, linked below as well, and you can ask us about all of our ACT tutoring. We'd love to just work with you specifically on what you need help with. But I can't wait to see all of you in our next video. If you subscribe, you're gonna get that notification and you'll see when I go live or when I post a new video, could be on Pythagorean theorem, could be on any of that sort of stuff. But I will see all of you then. Bye.